So today we're talking about podcasting, and I wanted to talk to you specifically, Jazz, about this because back in 2018 when we first started the Jazz Hacker podcast, we were thinking, how can we get you to get more reps in and to get more experience? And so we actually reached out and got you on other people's podcasts. How many have you been on now? So it's been 18 months. I've been on a little over 162 other people's podcasts. And so I think that's like when you started that we're going to be speaking about podcasts. It's going to be specifically about the importance of getting on other people's podcasts. Well, I also said it because if you are a podcaster, you already have a podcast show Mm -hmm. or you don't have a podcast show, regardless, you want to try to be putting yourself out there. And this is a great way to do it and to get you in front of a camera, getting used to having a dialogue with other people, answering questions, answering questions and, and getting your point across clear and concisely. Before we get into that, We'd be remiss if we didn't speak about why the heck we're just standing in the middle. Like you're in front of a dumpster. I'm leaning against a bunch of boxes. This is going to be the new headquarters for Fitigu and REC. We got uh, one month left. One month. So we've been counting told, down the days. So we've been told. Um, very excited about this new space. It's going to be really cool. Our our media crew is going to have their own little spot there. We're going to build out a brand new studio. Mm-hmm. I know you guys have been watching and listening um, to my podcast, Laura's. Uh, uh, Fitigu podcast as well um, and you guys saw us in this like room that we were there for two three years that studio now I, I just can't wait until this is all complete you said a month away a month away being featured on other people's podcasts you've also been featured on a yeah, lot of people's podcasts I probably how did done- it help you yeah, so it helped me in terms of this. What I found when I was originally a, a host on a podcast show mm-hmm. I didn't really know where to take the conversation. I also didn't know how to necessarily get what I call clippable content out mean? of the show. Yeah. So one of the main things about trying to get on other people's podcasts is that you can take the recording or you ask the, the host to send you the recording and then you can clip it up and just use the content that makes sense for you on your own social media page. So the magic of repurposing. Magic right? of repurposing. And, and it's so much easier when you're being asked questions, right, about your expertise. So as a real estate agent or a mortgage broker, imagine you're on someone's podcast about real estate mm-hmm. in, call it Vancouver. And if you're in Toronto and you're on someone else's podcast that is hosting in Vancouver or really anywhere in North America or the world, you're now getting so much exposure through their clients. Well, the good thing is, although I don't think you had a problem with this, when other people are asking you the questions and they're edifying you as the expert, yeah. you don't really need to brag. Jazz is pretty good at bragging. You have but to take a dig at someone. <laughs> I just <don't> have you? <laughs> to. Okay, I have yeah. to. But it, you know, it helps them edify you and it helps to get your name out there as an expert in whatever field it may be. So what you said at the start um, about putting in the reps, I think that is by far the most important reason that you want to get on other people's podcasts, especially if you're new at this. Like, I'm not talking about new, about podcasting, but just content creation in general. Because once you have people asking you questions, as we mentioned, it's a lot easier So, in terms of you don't have to think about what to say. Someone's asking a good question. It's about your expertise. Why should they buy in this area? How does somebody get a good property? You're putting in those reps. Like, for you, Laura, I want to go back for a second. Did you like? Did you find it easier? At- so the first time, no, not at all. I was scared shitless, quite honestly. The first time I was a guest on on anyone else's podcast, but over time it got easier, and over time it made me start to think and formulate ideas and concepts in my head, so that I could again communicate them to my audience in a way that they're going to understand and perhaps take action. And you only get that by practicing. Okay. Now, we talked about as. A- well, first and foremost, we want to keep these podcasts under 10 minutes. Let's see how we're doing, right? Um, no, we're going to We want to talk there. about how exactly. we're supposed to do it. So now we talked about why. Yes. Okay, so you understand that you're going to get exposure. You're going to get you're going to get to the reps put, in. put the reps in. And then number three is um, you're going to get clippable or you're going to be able to use the magic Repurpose. of repurposing. Content. Taking that, making clips under it. How does someone actually get on other people's podcasts. So this is a bit of a system, which is great, because for any of you who are thinking, oh, there's so many things I need to be doing, you can actually make this pretty simple for yourself. You just need to find a list of all podcast shows. Very easy to do. How do you do that? You Google 
<laughs> literally, <laughs> Google all real estate podcasts. There's already sh uh, spreadsheets that someone else has already put together. Just Google all real estate slash salesperson slash entrepreneurial podcast, mortgage podcast. And so now you have You're a list. list. And, and you have all the contact information. You have all, well, well. And it's generally email addresses. Yeah. People don't have phone numbers on those type of platforms. Sometimes you'll get lucky. You'll find a phone number. Here's something, a, a quick little hack as well. You know the podcast is XYZ podcast. You'll have their email address. Go like on their website because then you might get a phone number. Right, do a little of that detective work yeah. ahead of time. Once you have the information, you're gonna create a template email where you're essentially just gonna be adding in the name of the person, maybe the name of the podcast, perhaps you wanna reference a specific episode of their show that you watched and liked. So do a little bit of that background work because it shows that you're really putting your best foot forward and that you're caring a lot about the host. And Laura, you might actually just wanna to listen to a podcast episode of theirs as well, just to get an idea if you actually yeah. wanna- Do you even wanna be, be on do that? Do you even wanna be on their podcast? Maybe they're talking about investment strategies in real estate, but you really focus and are a lot more comfortable only talking about first time home buying. You probably don't wanna go into someone's podcast who's gonna be speaking high level, multi-unit conversions. Mm -hmm. Like that might be over your head, right? And so unless they also do other podcasts, uh, episodes and other topics, you might not wanna, might not wanna be on their episode. And then the other thing you might wanna do is once you do start to get on a couple people's podcasts and you have a library of episodes that you're on, maybe put together a YouTube playlist or get a couple links yeah. to, to go to other people's YouTube pages where you can showcase to this potential host, like, look, I've done this before. This is some of the work that I've been involved in. And then that can help build the rapport. Don't forget the importance of follow up. None of this will work. Like just shooting out an email to uh, the host Yas as a, a you know podcaster of XYZ podcast and shooting out a quick email and him not replying back a because he's just busy and never got around to it. Maybe he doesn't have a team who's actually looking at this and you go into his spam. The secret sauce here: your salesperson, a real estate agent, a mortgage broker. You need to know how to follow up, meaning you continue to follow up until they say no. Which now, means email after yes. email after email after email. I never it? want to hear people say, well, I tried reaching out to them. How many times? One exactly. time. Exactly. Never. Look, I mean, not as, even twice. As podcast hosts, when we bring on guests, some of the guests that we brought on, like my my podcast, yeah. they're big names. And people always know? ask us, Jazz, how did you get how much did how you, did you get them? Grant how much Cardone, you Gary V, yeah. Ryan Serhant? It's like we just followed up. We just never stopped following up consistently did it to a point where they were like, wow, for someone to put that much tenacity and effort behind something, I, I think they really want it. And you don't, the host almost feels like they want to help you out in that A hundred percent. And and look, you don't email them every week. That would be silly. You send out an email uh, today and then I would, I would say um, probably about three months later, send them another email. Hey, just not sure if you got the, uh, yeah. uh, my last email would love to be uh, a guest on your podcast because of X, Y, Z. In fact, yes, if you don't mind, um, can you just put um, our email address beneath us right here somewhere? For anybody who's watching or listening right now, email us at info at fitigumedia.com. We'll actually give you our email scripts that you can make use of. Make sure you obviously change it to, it's a skeleton, so change it to what, um, what, is, makes, sense what makes sense for you. It's info at fitigumedia.com and we'll just send you our email scripts that I mean, I've done it now, like I said, about a little over 160 times. I probably times. had around 50 times. Like, like, isn't that crazy? You've been on 50 other people's podcasts. Yeah. And at one point when you were starting, I remember talking to you about this. You're like, Jazz, like, it's going to take me so long. A year later, you're on well, 52 that, podcasts. That I also want to make mention of the fact that as a guest on people's podcasts, you want to do a little... Like people ask us, do, what kind of prep work do I need to yeah. do ahead yeah. of time, right? Yes. And what works well for us is actually kind of going in blind, not not knowing who your host is and, and who's going to be asking questions or the format of the show, but really not necessarily knowing what questions. So a lot of times people will say, I'd love to be on your podcast, Jazz, but I want to know the questions up front. And we don't have the questions up front. The reason is, is because we're trying to have dialogue, conversations that are just free flowing to really get to the meat of things. And so I think if you can go into it with that mentality, where you're just like, look, whatever question comes at me, I'm going to answer. If it's something I'm uncomfortable with, 
Just say, I'm uncomfortable answering that question or that's not my area of expertise, so I don't really want to comment on that. I don't want to misinform your listeners. And that's how you can kind of get a, uh, around that, but by still showcasing your personality, not looking like you're too rehearsed. And after you're on someone's podcast, make sure that you ask for a recording of it. And that's how you're actually going to repurpose it. But also, you're just going to send that podcast episode to everyone on your email list. And you're going to write a quick email. It doesn't need to be drawn out. Like, yeah, people quick email, a couple, couple like, lines. Like, was just featured on, on XYZ podcast. The host talked to me about, and whatever the topics were, maybe you have three things that you kind of touched on. Send that out. Would love your feedback. Write that at the end. Yeah. And because your clients are going to be like, oh, wow, you were featured on someone else's podcast like now you're starting to become the authority within your database and that's what this is all about like make no mistake this podcast episode we're doing for you today the previous ones make sure to go back and any future ones it's not to make you youtube and podcast stars and tiktok stars it's about going in depth with your community and you do that by providing educational content over and over and over again. This way, you're not someone who's trying to sell to them, you're bringing education and information so they can make an informed quality decision themselves. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. So guys, get off your butts and go find that list on Google, a quick Google search and then start reaching out to these people, you're going to see it's a complete game changer when it comes to content creation.